Hello there. You're welcome to another episode of your all-female focus program, Total Woman. My name is Muti Olori. The conversation on violence against women is still on. And I have a guest in the house today who would look at these issues with me. When people talk about violence, violence is an act that is committed against women and children, especially the girl child. The history of violence against women is vague. And this is because many cases of violence go unreported because of various reasons. Social norms, stigmatization, taboo, and just for the fact that it's a subject of sex and rape and assault, no one wants to talk about it. But now, it's everywhere. With the invention of cameras and social media, in 2020, everyone is talking about it. All hands are on deck. So my guest is um, a formidable gender um, equality champion, a woman who wears many hats. She is the special advisor of the Honorable Chairman of Abuja Municipal Council on ICT, a Mandela Washington Fellow, a woman leader of the Nigerian Women Trust Fund, public health consultant, and a researcher. She's very passionate about women and the issues that pertain to the girl child. Please join me to welcome my guest on the program today to talk about violence against women. No other person than Abiodun Esiet. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on the program today. Thank you very much. I know your NGO deals with a lot of issues with women. Mm. And most of your researches that you have done mm. are on women, gender-based abuse. Can you give us an idea of the statistics of what it is? Is it really as bad or people are just uh, making a whole noise about it? Thank you very much. I think, you know, gender-based violence is something that we've been calling the attention of the government in this last few weeks because it has become so rapid and become so prevalent within our communities. Mm -hmm. One, due to the issue of lockdown and COVID-19, we've had more cases of reported cases of gender-based violence within our communities. And we think as a feminist and as a, as a group of women, we believe it's time for government of Nigeria to declare a state of emergency on mm -hmm. rape cases and also sexual-based violence in Nigeria. So it's something that we all need to talk about and it's something that we all need to address. We need an instant and immediate action from the government and from members of the society. Everyone have a role to play to stop this madness and address issues that are pertaining to sexual based violence. But do you think we're going about it the right way? Because it's like we are, most of the protests I see is a reaction to what is done already. Can we begin to change you? The, the, the narrative to more prevention. Why, why are we just reacting to it now? Why, why don't we address it from a um, mm -hmm. prevention point of view? Yeah, from, uh, from my own perspective, I believe we were supposed to also put proper perspective into place in concerning the circumstances that brings about this violence and also address it in a way of reacting. We, a lot of women's groups are reacting to this because we've said so many things that should be put in place that the government is not doing. So we thought, okay, we need to go out there and also add our voice to what is going on and also demand for legal reform and mm. also demand for so many other things that should address these cases. So we've been talking about it not once, not twice. Beijing Platform for Action said a whole lot about ending violence against women and that was 25 years ago and we are still talking about it. So I think it's about reacting to some of these things that the government has also been a signatory to and they are not really domesticating some of these laws and policies. On my own view, I also feel it's important for us to also address some of the circumstances that brings about this issue of rape cases or sexual violence in the family. So we're talking about socialization of boys and girls. So I think now we're focusing too much on girl child and mm -hmm. also 
putting less emphasis on the boy child. So they are going to grow up and come to the same mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. that focus so much on the girl child. And now the boys are not the boys, yes. and they get in the boys. So we are supposed to socialize them in a way to respect the values of humanity and also respect some of our African cultures and beliefs that promote equality and promote justice. So we are supposed to raise our boys the same way we're raising our girls and also to lay emphasis on girl child empowerment promoting girl child education is one of the key factors that we need to look at mm. so most of you have over 10.5 million children out of school and a larger percentage of those people are, are girls. girls so we need to also advocate to our decision makers mm. to make policies in place that makes it mandatory for a girl child to be in school and also protect a girl child to stay in school mm -hmm. in the sense that we also need to provide the basic amenities that makes a girl child to stay in school so a lot of our girls are not coming to school when they are doing their menstrual periods because there's no toilet and there's no running water so we're advocating that wash should be put in place in all our schools to encourage our girl child to stay in school and also learn through the whole process it's seen a whole lot mm -hmm that needs to be done, yes. which we have been asking for for 25 years. Yeah. Let's look at the legal system. Mm. What is the real situation? Because I know that recently, the, there's this talk about social justice, child rights justice. What is real the situation? What does the law say when someone, when a rapist is brought before the court of law? Okay, thank you very much. So for Nigeria, we have Violence Against Person Prohibition Act that was passed into law 2015. And with that, we have about maybe closely to maybe around 13 states out of 36 that have passed this into law. So it's also a time for us to also advocate to all our decision makers across the state to also look into this law and pass it into into law, adopt it or domesticate it in their various states. Because number one, it's important for us to use it as an important tool to fight uh, rape cases and also sexual based violence cases. For Nigeria, we're also looking, because of the new trend or increase in the incidence of rape cases, women's group are also advocating that they, they have life imprisonment for you know perpetrators of rape. And also in Nigeria, we have now a sexual assault register, sexual abuse register with uh, NAPTIP. So anyone that has been convicted of rape will have their register published. And we've just published uh, the first register in Nigeria to show that, yes, we are we're doing exactly what we're advocating for. So I think that's the stage we have. So we want more stiff um, laws and policies to be put in place in all our you know states and for governors to also adopt this policy and domesticate that in their various states so that we know we have an important tool to address issues of sexual based violence in nigeria thank you so much if you're just joining us we're talking about violence against women and my guest is no other person than the personal um okay. advisor to the honorable chairman of abuja municipal council on ict uh, she's a Biodun yet, and she's been um, enlightening us a little bit about the issues, the way it is, and um, what we need to to do. So we'll take a short break. We'll be right back, and the conversation continues. No, I don't want to. I don't want to anymore. <laughs> ha! His fans will drag you on social media. He said I should close my eyes and begin to pray. Then he touched me. Ha! Blasphemy. Daddy, please, please, I don't want to. Come on, keep quiet! How dare you accuse your father? Uncle, please, please. It's paining me. Shh, keep quiet. How can you say your uncle did that? He told me I know what to do if I want to. Then we blacklist you. Oh God, I beg, I beg, I beg, man, I'm gonna kill me, I beg. Shut up! Are you saying my husband touched your dirty, smelling body? Uncle, I don't want the mineral and biscuit again. 
Boys will always be boys. Husband or not, he raped me. Ah, uh -uh. you know, seen a man he be. Eh? Please stop. I said stop. Uh, but what were you wearing, Seth? quiet and keep it in the family or else I will not be quiet I am a girl child it is not a crime I will not be afraid I will not shut up I will use my voice the world hears me. Welcome back. It's still Total Woman on AD4 TV radio. Let's look at the Vamp Act. What is it about? Because people would say, okay, we're here. The National Assembly have been talking about it and they've, they've done the second reading, it's passed. What is it about? What's the content of this act we're asking for? Okay, thank you so much for that. So, Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act is to address issues of violence against all gender, both men and women, but with more emphasis on women. It's addressed some of the cultural issues that we've been having that is affecting women and girl child development. So, in here, it has been passed into law 2015. And what we are asking for from other governments is for them to domesticate this law in their state. So we want the state assembly of various uh, states that have not passed this uh, law in, or domesticated it to domesticate it because of the current trend of sexual based violence in Nigeria. And you know, there's no state that is left out. These cases of sexual based violence is happening everywhere. And we want all our states in Nigeria to pass this bill. So it's not only, it doesn't really address rape, it addresses issues like FGM mm -hmm. and also widows' rights. And also, it also addresses things like abandonment. You can abandon your child or lock your wife outside, mm -hmm. it's against the law. So, so many things, and also indecent dressing. Okay. Yeah. So there are about maybe 14 or 20 provisions. You know, when, when you talk about this, in the same dressing, there's the latest argument yes. that we've seen cases of two year old, two months, five year old, six year old being raped. Has in the same dressing got to do with that? No. And I don't really support in the Because that's dressing. the argument. I mean, to the extent that a senator in the house brought that as. It's, a, it's an important tool for the men to really try to cover up their mistakes and say it's because what the lady... So it's not about the victim, it's about what the perpetrator has done. We have cases of a one-year-old wearing pampers being raped. Are we going to talk of indecent dressing? We have people covering all their bodies and they are being raped. Are we going to talk about that? So it's just a way, an easy way for the men to say, okay, it's you know, it's because of what she's wearing. But we can't keep talking about that. It's just to really put everything half back on the victim and say, no, it's our fault. It has always been our fault. What is the reason behind FGM? So that women will not go about having sex with another man. So it's all about what the women can do. So this has been a patriarchy kind of discussion exactly. to change the narrative back to know it's the women mm. that, is, that mm. are doing the wrong shaming thing. Shaming the victim? Yes, shaming Instead the victim. Instead of dealing with the perpetrators. Instead of dealing with the mm. perpetrators. So as a feminist, we we'll, we'll change the narrative and mm. ask people to really address the circumstances or the situation we address and not the dressing of a child or of a lady. So we've seen so many cases that have really gone beyond what, it, what was she wearing. But in your opinion, do you think the castration some feminist groups are asking for, do you think that would be a solution to the problem? 
for me, I think it might reduce the incidence of rape when they say, okay, there's a skip punishment, you're incarcerated. Oh, people will now watch what they're doing. But some other people, they may not take it as something that could really affect the narrative. But on my own perspective, for Nigeria, I think we need more than the law and policy. There's so many things going on within our system. I believe in the feminist approach on domains of change that says we cannot only address issues that affect women on judiciary or legal matters alone, using legal tools or, you know, alone. We mm. need to address things that are related to our society. We need to address things that are related to our culture that made us to get to this point mm. whereby a woman will be abused by a man and she wouldn't have the courage to even speak and or say it out. And, yes. and also, what are we saying in religious gathering? Okay, women are weaker sex, so anything they do to mm. them, they should keep quiet. So what are we saying concerning how we are bringing up our girl child? Now, you still believe in the gender role of a girl child. A girl belongs to the kitchen, kitchen. and the other room, mm. while the men do the business of watching the TV and also doing other businesses. Mm. So it's all about, you know, for us to address these things holistically, we need to address all these different sectors of, you know, change. Of society, yeah. Yes, so that we can really bring about an effective and holistic change concerning women's development in Nigeria. Wow. All hands must be on deck. And that's what we're saying. That's why we are adding our voices to say we must say no to any form of violence. And to you, state governments and legislators, who need to pass this bill? I don't know. Do you want it to get home to you like your own child, your own wife or mother has been affected before you do the rightful thing? I think we should start having a rethink and then consider every woman as human because a woman's life is as good as a human life all right we would like to look at the issue of the victim now are there things that you think we are as women should begin to put in place mm -hmm. to see how we can protect ourselves and also reduce this violence that has been perpetrated against us and our culture. Yeah, thank you so much for that. So for the victim, number okay, first let me talk about the prosecution process for a victim. How let me take you through the prosecution process so that you understand what a victim feels when they want to report cases of violence. Mm. So for us, if for instance you go to the police station, you said they want to report a case of violence, number one. You will have you be referred to the gender unit of the police and for them to really attend to you and also question, interrogate some of your discussions and all that. And you get to the station and the police officer is asking you, what were you doing? Hmm. Is the guy your boyfriend? So how did you get to that place? And all sorts of questions. So these are the things a victim face hmm. getting reporting cases. And also, some of them will even keep quiet for days. And you know, for specifically for rape cases, you can't keep quiet for days because you are losing the evidence. Hmm. So we always encourage victims when you are being abused, report immediately. Report immediately. Yeah. Get somebody you can confine in that can help you to report and domesticate or document some of these cases because we lose a whole lot of cases because people are not people we didn't get enough evidence to prove that this girl was actually raped right. so you know getting to the police station you are being victimized you are being harassed because of what you do because you are reporting a rape case mm. now they ask you to go to an hospital and the second mistake a victim makes is going to just a regular hospital to get their self-examined so we always sensitize people to go to a government hospital because mm -hmm. that's the that's only recognized yes, by the law by the law so that we we can have enough proof mm. and report to really push for our prosecution so we are, 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 encourage them to go to a general hospital a government owned hospital to get examined mm. and once that is done and when they get to the hospital guess what happens money for the card money for the victim money. Yes. is made to pay yeah. for the yeah. process yes money for everything money for the examination you have been you know you are going to so much and you have been hacked 
to pay a whole lot of money. So I think for us as government institution, we need we, mm. we should think on how we can help victims during this process and see how governments can pay for some of this investigation so that we don't put too much stress on victims. And you know, the NGOs are the ones that come to rescue victims in cases like this. They you know they pay for all the bills and all that. And but I think it's time for government to put proper measures in place to address things like that and you know when you go through that then family people comes in and they ask you okay they've gone to beg your family mm -hmm. can you withdraw this case yes. and the father will say no i have the right then the perpetrator also go about bribing mm -hmm. parents by mm -hmm. bribing police officer to look the other way and make the pay kids go the other way and that's how you know and nobody's paying attention yeah, to the victim nobody how she's feeling yeah what she's going through yes that brings me to my next question mm -hmm. and i think probably that will be your final question for for today what do we have in place to take care of a victim either maybe those who are married and are being abused is there somewhere they can go to um those like little young girls who have been abused is there a form of um a center for them where they go to receive counseling psychological or emotional um resort to the whole problems mm -hmm. what measure do we, do we have in place right now okay thank you very much for that so i will talk about fct what we have in place for victim so working with uh, other organizations like EU RULAC and other organizations working around Spotlight Initiative in FCT. So we are working towards creating a database for NGOs and also government agencies offering social services to victims. So in all the six area councils and also in FCT, we have a social service department where we address issues about violence against women and also gender-based violence, all cases of violence against women. So all the area councils and also FCT have that in place. And also we have some NGOs that uh, specialize in addressing issues of violence against women. We have Dorothy Foundation, we have Education as a Vaccine, we have quite a whole lot of them that are addressing issues of violence. So we are developing a database so that victim would know where to go, where to reach out to. So during the COVID-19 lockdown, we established a call center for victims to call in throughout the lockdown when they have issues of violence. And we, we did that throughout the lockdown period and we received a whole lot of calls. So do we victims. have shelter for that? Yes. So for FCT, we have a shelter home for victims that they can stay for three months while we prosecute their cases and address issues that affect them. So we have that in place around the zone A of the FCT and other NGOs also have some similar, similar things in place. Some take care of a shelter or pay for mm. a place for victims to stay while they address uh, issues that they are facing. Do, that means we have enough Position. We may not. I don't think we have enough. Thanks to Naptip. Naptip is in Abuja. Okay. So Naptip has also a shelter in place. But you know, Naptip is for everybody, not only in Abuja. So mm -hmm. we are, with that, we are also using Naptip shelter to for victims or we But that, this is just one place. Do you think such things is 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 being represented or replicated in the whole of the whole of Nigeria? Yes. Yes, I know Lagos is doing well. They have a center in place mm -hmm. for victims. And what I would advocate for government agency and also NGOs is to set up a safe space for women and girls in each community. Mm -hmm. I think it's a place where they can run to. You know, all these cases happen in the community. So they should, they should have a place within the community where a girl can run to, a woman can run to, and also share some of our, mm. some of our issues. In Rwanda, they call it Sange. It's one-stop center, mm. and it's in all their district hospitals. They have that center, and it's linked to the legal unit, it's linked to the police, it's linked to the medical unit. So you have a one-stop center. So once you get in there, everything is stopped. Is, is, um, is on your case. Yeah. So receiving psychological uh, treatments and supports, emotional mm -hmm. supports, legal mm -hmm. supports. Um, 
it will be a good thing to, for us for really to really have nice um, that here. Yeah. I really want to say thank you very much thank for you. being on The Total Woman today. It's been uh, very educative for me. Okay. And I'm sure for a lot of our audience to watching, they've learned one or two things. Um, mm. Maybe uh, you want to give a last word. Hmm. I just say Ubuntu, humanity. Human's rights are human's rights. You've heard it. Women's rights are human rights. Let's do what is right. If we need to institutionalize most of these laws and acts, please let's do the needful. It's time to protect the life of every girl and every woman. I can't go on the streets and walk in my country with great fear because someone will just come from nowhere to molest me and the person is, feels that um, the process before the law will take its course is a long one and I might lose or nobody will believe me as a child when I say I'm being molested. Not on our watch. Let it not be on your watch. I'll see you again next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.